Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk. Now, I, I love to talk about tax lien certificates, and I love to talk about tax deeds and, and how to make money, and uh, we're certainly going to talk about making money today. But one of the things that's a, a little bit of a struggle for almost all of my clients is what you're going to hear answers to today. And that is this. We're able to buy these properties for pennies on the dollar, which is great. We're all so proud of ourselves, 10, 20 cents on the dollar, or we were up there in Georgia making 20 cents on, on an investment for a month or two. It's a wonderful way to make money. When it comes time to selling, we can't, we stumble around. And what we really need to do if we want to get to the bank is we're probably going to have to not only sell ourselves, we're going to have to sell the property. So listen to what, who's my guest today. Her name is Joyce Bone, and listen to this. Her title is the Queen of Green. Now, is that good or not? Anxiety-free selling, that's what she's going to talk about. Now, I don't know if there is such a thing as anxiety-free selling, but we're both going to learn a lot today. So let's see if we got Joyce on the line. Joyce, are you with us today? I am, Ted. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're happy to have you because you have a subject that everyone's interested in and everyone needs your information. Where should we start? Should we start with your background or do you want to get right into selling? Where do you prefer? I guess we'll start with my background so they can have an understanding of where I came from and the fact that I can feel their pain. I've been there, done that kind of thing. And they'll see that really anything can be figured out, right? Even if you're yeah. reticent to sell, that can be figured out and conquered and turned into a strength. Do you want me to just jump into that yeah, a little? Just, yeah, t tell us a little bit about you. But what they really want to know is about selling. So tell us about you and how you got in the business and how you got to teaching and educating people. And then let's go right into what well, terrified of selling. You know that. So that's where this word anxiety came from. And uh, can you help them with that? Sure. First of all, for me, selling is a way to get to what you want, right? And in order to get what you want, you have to help the other person get what they want. It's really about the other person. And uh, I look as selling as consulting and, and that it's a giving activity because you're helping somebody solve a problem, right? So there's nothing wrong with selling. It's, to me, a very honorable thing to do. And also one of the most transparent. So it really has that high bar and it creates personal development opportunities. And that's what I love about selling. But I, I started out selling while well, I started my own business when I was 28. I was a stay-at-home mom and I decided to start a business. And I had to persuade a lot of people to get on my team. So I went from sitting at my kitchen table trying to figure out what I wanted to do to raising $13 million in my first, uh, what's called a private placement memorandum. And I literally nearly fainted <laughs> when I first went out there. I was so terrified. I had such anxiety about doing this pitch to these investors because I felt intimidated. These were all very wealthy people. And I was trying to sell them on investing in my business. And long story short, I ended up getting the money. I survived. And that's the biggest thing about sales is there's a lot of activities that you can do to override that fight or flight tendency that we get when we're nervous or anxious. And it's all about just shifting your mindset. I went from, like I said, a stay-at-home mom to I had a $50 million company within 18 months. And I grew, I grew through acquisition. So I was constantly selling. I was selling business owners on the idea of, of selling their business to me, selling to investors to invest money in my company, selling to Wall Street. We ended up going public and it was just um, baptism by fire so that I was constantly having to persuade and sell. And what I've learned during that process was it's all about mindset when you're selling that yes, there are techniques that you and tactics that you can learn by reading a book and applying um, but at the end of the day, it's all about how you position what you're doing in your mind. Uh, for me, instead of feeling fear, I, when I start feeling anxiety, anxiousness, fear, I say, I'm excited because really excitement is on the other side of fear. It's like the opposite side of the coin. 
And it's little things like that. If you really start studying, it's what I teach in my anxiety free selling courses, actual physical techniques that you can do to override that sensation. And just know that uh, when you take the focus off yourself and put it where it should be on the client or the customer, then the those butterflies will go away because it's really not about you. It's about them. Wow. Wow. This is really good. You're a young female and it's always been a male dominated business uh, that is investing and selling both of those male dominated. So you're making breakthroughs here, aren't you? Yeah. There's not too many women have built a company and taken it public. So I, I guess that is rare, <laughs> but I grew up yeah. in between two brothers. So I was a tomboy growing up and I was always playing, played on team sports and played basketball, softball. So I had that. I, I really think people who play on teams learn how to really be assertive in life because you've got that competitive spirit. Yeah, competitive spirit is really, but that's overstated. Tell us from a female perspective how you cross that bridge. You're, you, yeah, you had two brothers, yes, or tomboy. I get that, but I think, uh, let me tell you this first. I have a database, of course, of clients. 63% of my clients, 63 now, percent are women. Whoa, think about that. Good so, for women. It's not women can't be successful. You're a young woman successful. My, my average client is somebody between 45 and 65. You're much younger than that. What's, what's your inspiration here? Did you, did you just want to make money or you just, was it really like just a competitive spirit? I think there's probably something more than I'm just <laughs> I wanted to make money. I, I make okay. no bones about the fact that I went into business to make money. There are so many people out there that are think money's dirty or not good, but all I know is it takes money to pay for you know, my kids' schooling and braces and travel ball. And there, to me, that is the purpose of business is to get a return on your time invested because that's the ultimate resource. You don't ever get your time back. I, I did go into it and, and people say, oh, I, can, I couldn't do something. I wasn't. Now, I'll let you in on a secret. I was in the environment. I am in the environmental business. And uh, so I started a non-hazardous liquid waste company. It doesn't get any male do more male dominated than that. Uh, and I chose that field because I had seen another area in the environmental business uh, rolled up and taken public. And so I, I copied a business model. I knew that worked. And I just chose that not because I was passionate about that topic, but because I was passionate about changing my family's financial future and about creating a company culture where everybody who worked with me would have a great work life. Everybody would be gainfully employed and be able to feed their families and have their lives. So there are many things in business that you can get passionate about. It doesn't necessarily have to be the thing that you're doing. So I think that's a little word to the wise. If you're out there trying to figure out what you want to do, do something that will make you money and find the passion within it. I'm able to get passionate about just about anything <laughs> as long as I can see how it benefits well, people. But as far as women in business and what it's, how it's different, I would say there were times where, to use a basketball analogy, I had to throw elbows, right? I had to stand up and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people. Really? Well, yeah, 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 absolutely. And I remember one guy said to me, you're really aggressive. <laughs> and I said, I really am. Actually, I'm the opposite of aggressive. I'm, I'm from the South and I, we are not really that pushy. But I said to him, I don't agree with your wording <laughs> and words have power. What I would call myself is assertive. I would call myself assertive. I know where I'm going and I know what I have to do to get there. And I will talk to people in order to make that happen. Now, if I was a man, I think that you would have used the word assertive rather than aggressive. So I'm just going to disregard that altogether. <laughs> oh, you're, in a, you're right here with me on the front lines of capitalism. You're not afraid. You're ready, to, you're ready to tangle if you have to. Hi, this is Linda. I wanted to let you know that we are in the middle of planning our next three-day auction preparation workshop that will be held in December 2019. If you are interested in attending, meeting Ted, meeting the coaches, and the successful students, call the office at 321-449-9940 
or send an email to info at tedthomas.com. We're talking a lot of finance stuff, but let me ask you one question. I love the elbow comment, but there was a very important one. You talked about roll-ups, and most of our people are, are real estate people, and uh, just give them a, a one minute about roll-ups, and then, then let's go back to this anxiety-free selling, because okay. uh, this is very impressive background that you have, and uh, a lot of people should be listening. This will, get, this will be another podcast, because we should talk more about that, but I build it as the anxiety-free selling. But uh, yeah. tell me what a roll-up is first, okay? A roll-up is a business strategy where you go around and you buy smaller companies to create a larger company. And it happens in a variety of industries all the time. Funeral homes is an example of roll-ups. There was always mom-and-pop funeral homes, and then all of a sudden national players come in and they start buying these smaller companies to get bigger. And it's LP gas, funeral homes, like little Home Depot-type stores, the waste industry goes on and on. So it's just a way where you can grow exponentially by going out, getting investors, putting a pot of money together, identifying a field that is fragmented. So that's the key to it. You've got to find a field that's fragmented, meaning there's a lot of mom and pops, but there's no national players. So at the time that I did my deal on Earth Care, that was the name of the company, I went to the International Liquid Waste convention. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh I never thought I would be here, but yet I was there and I, I walked the floor and I could literally see the fragmented markets. So you'd see clumps of people walking together in like matching jackets that, that all said, oh my. Truck. that was the cherry on top of my research I had done. And I shook with my uh, partner I brought in at, in that, on that floor at the Opryland hotel and we moved forward. So that was the defining factor to move forward. Congratulations on that. That's really good. And starting out by raising $13 million for anybody that just turned in late, uh, she's going to talk about anxiety-free selling, and she had to go out and raise $13 million on her first offering. So let's go back to that anxiety-free selling if we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So using that situation one more time, I remember I literally was in the back hyperventilating uh, to the point where I was like looking for a brown paper bag <laughs> to breathe into oh to get my carbon dioxide levels up. But, and then I saw stars. I was really anxious. And so how I, I worked myself out of it because I was literally the only female present. And I thought, how lame is it for me to walk out there and faint? So I need to pull it together and, and go and deliver. And so, you know, I took some, I did some deep breathing I walked in circles, moved my arms, expelled the energy. That's another thing. Expel your energy. And I just went out there. I told myself, Joyce, it's time to put on your big girl panties. Get out there and do what you got to <laughs> do. That's what I did. But for people that are not pitching in front of investors but have to pick up the phone and are anxious, that is real too. And at the end of the day, when you have to make phone calls and you're uncomfortable doing it, it's just a matter of repetition. If you can force yourself to get through the first few and understand you're going to step on your tongue, that's what I call it, when you're making your first few calls. So don't call your highest quality leads first. You start with some smaller fish and work through your nerves. I keep a picture of my kids on my desk. So anytime I don't want to do something sales related, I can look at that picture and be like, you know, do it for them. Do it for them if you won't do it for yourself. And uh, today just happens to be my anniversary. So I enjoy being able to do things that help take the pressure off my husband as well. So there's a lot of reasons to do things that are uncomfortable in life. And I always suggest to people that have to make a lot of phone calls that they get a dialer because it really takes a lot of the wear and tear off of you. They're out there like Mojo Dialer or just Google Dialer. And they'll do the dialing for you, and then they can drop voicemail if nobody answers. And then if somebody is live, then you start talking to them. And have a script. Scripts really help because then you're not wondering what you're going to say. So figure out some quality scripts for whatever hey, let me stop. you're in. Let me stop you on that because you're – you're like a dynamo, and uh, and uh, I turn the machine on, and it keeps speeding up here, so i got to slow you down. <laughs> my client, clients won't be able to keep up with you. <laughs> so let's go back to this basic selling stuff, because you're, I have clients, you'd be amazed. They're afraid to call the broker to come and take care of the, get the household for them. They're afraid of that. So how do you get by that anxiety? You 
If you're afraid to call the broker to come help you sell something, they're on your team. You might be in the wrong business <laughs> if it's that bad for you. But uh, to get over it, you got to really look at yourself. There's That's the thing about sales is it's really a personal development field. And if you're struggling in a specific area, I would suggest you start by getting on YouTube and watching videos or, or listening to a, an a, you know, audible book on the topic or a podcast. I have the anxiety free selling podcast. So it's like, you can go listen to it, learn different techniques and how other people have uh, overcome it. So I would suggest. No, that stop you it. Stop you. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got to slow you down here. So tell me about this podcast now because they, they can listen to this and it's going to guide them. Yes, absolutely. It's Where I mean, is that? It's uh, anxiety free selling and uh -huh. it's on iTunes, Spotify. I have some on some the videos on YouTube at Joyce phone. You can just hop on there and watch other salespeople and how they've gotten to where they've gotten and how they've overcome their fears and they give tips and talk about how they overcame their anxiety. So it's all about just immersing yourself in whatever is holding you back. I could give, idea after idea, but it's really about what is, what you're particularly suffering with. So I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I can give you general tips, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to overcome it. And it really helps to get a prospecting partner. So let's say you're not making phone calls. Maybe you have to go knock door to door. I, my first, when I was, got my first sales job, I landed the Braves account in the first four days of starting the division. I didn't even have a price when I started, but I figured it out. And that's the biggest thing. You have to be okay with not knowing things, right? You have working in the gray areas, just know where you want to get to and then start walking that direction and take action. And when you take action, you'll get feedback. You can apply that feedback, adjust and keep going. And with the Fulton County Stadium account, I had to talk my way past the guard I had to talk my way into getting a five minute meeting with the guy because I didn't have an appointment, but I sat on his sofa in his waiting area for two hours, you know, just letting him know I needed five minutes. And I did try to call and set an appointment, but he didn't call me back. And I basically wore him down. He brought me in and I did my pitch and I ended up getting the contract on the spot, which I was like so shocked. I wasn't expecting that, but I was prepared. I brought a contract. So always be prepared. That's another thing is you never know when you're going to have an opportunity and don't ever lose those opportunities. Sometimes they happen in an elevator. Sometimes they happen at a party. You just never know. So always be prepared with your pitch, your little 60 second elevator speech and have a card, business card on you and take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. I wrote a book and I ran into a publisher at a party and I was with my husband and you know, she's, oh, yes, we're looking for women authors. And I went, really? Because I have an idea. And I just went into pitch. And my husband's like, man. Yeah. yeah. That's, right. That's right, Ted. That's right, Ted. Yeah. So I just right. took advantage of the, the moment. And my husband's like, you're really good at pitching yourself. I would never be able to do that. I'm like, it's because uh, I know what yeah. I want. All right. So let's, because I'll run out of time here, but I've you're about four podcasts from me. I can see that. This is really, you're really giving us good information. But let's, I, I don't want to end on a down note or anything, but I do want to, everybody talks about everything that's always great. So you got the Braves account. How great was that? You waited two hours. Two hours sitting on the couch is a big pain in the couch. It's not a lot of fun. And then you have to go and pitch and you're nervous and whatever. But tell people about a couple of turndowns you, you had and how you felt about it and then what you did about it. I think that would be a good example. What do you think? Okay, turn down. Okay. <laughs> it's not that I haven't had them. It's that I just don't, I don't bask in negativity. When I, when something gets turned down, I just go next. <laughs> Literally, I did have one situation where it was a, a $52 billion company I'd gotten into on a cold call, on a phone call. And it was in, it was in Canada. I flew up to Toronto. I had these great meetings. I got, they were like, okay, we're going to do this. And so they agreed. I sent the contracts and then it went silent for three months. I couldn't get this guy on the phone. I was pissed. <laughs> uh, by the end of it, I just written it off. I was like, it's over. And it was just bizarre because I literally I had, we were all 
moving forward. It was contracts and it just disappeared. And so I really? finally, I called him and I just, or no, I emailed him and I said, I would just really to know, I said, I've written this off. It's a, it, I've spent a lot of time, money, and energy on this. I'd really like to know what happened if you ever have a moment. And uh, he got back to me. He's like, oh, no, it's still on. I, my boss got fired, and I got a new boss. And so it was back to being on. Oh, but, goodness. oh my goodness. It was yeah. still on. And so yeah. the thing is, it's, I analyze the situation. I take the action. And if he'd come back and said, we changed our mind, I would have let it go and moved on. But I do try to follow up in those situations and hold people accountable, hold their feet to the fire. How important is follow up? It's everything. <laughs> everything. Oh. It is everything. That's where the magic that happens. Mean, that mean, what does that mean? When you follow up, you make a phone call. Someone says, call me next week. Call me in three months. Call me in six months. No, no. no. that's what they said. What do you oh, mean? yeah. If they say no, I hear that is not yet. And so, so that that's why this is part of the you you relieve the anxiety by having a plan you've got a plan if someone says no you know what you're going to say and it's not going to hurt your feelings right exactly because it's they're not saying no to to joyce they're saying no to whatever the opportunity is Proposal. because the time might not be right for them they may exactly. but it doesn't mean that it won't be right down the road i've just never taken things per no one has ever said I hate you. You're horrible. You're terrible. Nobody's ever done anything to me or said anything to me that was a personal attack. It's just a matter of whether it's a fit or not. And we all as salespeople, if you keep your sales funnel full, you won't be crying over deals you didn't get because you'll be so busy with your full pipeline that you'll be like, okay, they said no for now. Okay, just put that on the back burner. What's next? So that's the key to it is you can't hang your hat on one or two deals. And I've done that in the past. I've certainly done that. Whereas, oh, that's going to, I call it happy ears. Oh, just like our contract until the deed, the deal is signed and the money's in the bank. It's not done in my world. That's how I live because I have been burnt many times. I've been in sales a long time now. I just had someone, uh, I, I, got a deal for them. And then the guys, I changed my mind. I don't want to sell. And after all, and I'm like, really? Cause you didn't change your mind while I was marketing for you. And when I found you a full price offer, so, so it, that happens and you just got to let it go. Like they sing. In yeah. Some people business. are inter interested in your best interest. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, but the real point is this is not business for everybody, right? Sales is not, well, I disagree with that because if you're married, you're in sales. If you do any type of negotiation, if you ask for a discount at the store, you're in sales. I, I believe everybody's in sales. It's just to what level are you willing to take it to? And uh, so, but I have to agree with you. Some people just uh, break out in hives. I remember I was coaching a friend of mine about uh, getting her some business. She was in a nonprofit. I said, who would be your ideal client? And she's like, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So I said, okay, let's call him. And she got all nervous looking. I said, don't worry, I'll make the call. And so I sat there and I did it in front of her. I got the information, got the contact email, and I we had a great conversation. I hang up and I go, see how easy that was? Nobody bit me. It was very pleasant. And even if they'd hung up on me, it wouldn't have mattered. I just would have called the next foundation. And she looked at me, she goes, I felt sick to my stomach just watching you. <laughs> and I said, then maybe you shouldn't be in sales. Maybe you should outsource that piece. Right. Uh, I don't want to run out of time. I want to keep this going for another two hours, but give us some resources and make us a promise that you'll come back. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, resources. I already mentioned my podcast. That is specifically about anxiety-free selling. Anxiety-free selling podcast. There's also plenty of YouTubes videos out there on salespeople that can train you. And if you can listen to mine, then follow the people that are on the show. Like Ted Thomas, I'll be having yours up there shortly. Thank you for being on my show. I would encourage everybody listening to head over to my podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and all the major distributions outlets. It's Anxiety Free Selling, or you can go to my YouTube channel, Joyce Bone, and watch videos there. And you can reach out at joycebone.com if you are looking for any coaching 
or visit my website, JoyceBone.com. Thanks so much for having me, Ted. Thank you for joining us today. Go to TedThomas.com to learn how you can start making smart, secure investments today. Be sure to check out the rest of the episodes to find out more about Imagine Wealth Without Risk.